Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I've got a double feature for you guys. But it's not just any double feature. This is a double feature where Aaron and I clash head to head. But it's not what you think. Um, now, I'll get right to the point. Aaron was doing a stream last night, and I jumped in, and he just happened to be doing countins and stuff, so I decided, why not jump into the party with the guys, shoot a little bit of crap with them, and maybe get into the game. You never know. And it just so happens I did get into the game twice. Two games against Aaron and his divisions. Um, now, Aaron was just doing some regular member streams, so he was switching out divisions throughout uh, every match he would switch out or so. But uh, this first match was actually the second match in our little clash, and this one I'm going to be in the Udachi. The second match that you guys will see, which was actually the first match, I will be in the Jean Bar. So uh, I want you guys to pay attention, not so much to what I'm doing, because I don't do anything particularly special during these matches other than just try to find a place where I can be useful. Uh, this game just happens to be a carrier game. He does happen to have a Friesland in the division with him and a radar cruiser in the form of a Cleveland. Aaron is in a battleship. Um, so we have to be very, very careful of what we do. We're in a Udachi, very squishy ship. So if we get caught at the wrong time, we can easily be quickly removed from the match. Uh, and their carrier to his credit, is actually going to be going kind of out of his way to, to harass me a little bit. I say harass with tongue-in-cheek because he doesn't. He just kind of spots me a couple of times. And while he does do a decent job of spotting me, he doesn't really do anything to counter me. He spots me briefly and then just kind of flies away, which allows me to just kind of run rampant. Anytime you give me a chance and a Japanese destroyer to run around and just do bad things you can see here this was a terrible torpedo launch by me i can clearly see the planes that are about to fly over and he's going to spot those torpedoes meaning even if there is somebody there which the uh, there clearly is a friesland in the b cap even if there is somebody there i'm not going to hit them with torpedoes because they're going to be spotted now here i failed to realize that i didn't have my aa turned off so Normally, when I'm playing as a Japanese destroyer, I have my AA turned off. And the reason for that is so that I don't get harassed by carriers. Because it's bad for my health. And the Japanese destroyers don't have a lot of health to begin with. Now here, I've already used my reload booster. And so we're going to go ahead and come around the corner and we're going to fill this smoke screen with torpedoes in hopes of driving the destroyer that's there out. Now we already know what's there. It's a Summers. Now, Summers has a ridiculous amount of firepower per salvo that can easily get, a, get us removed in three salvos if he lands all, all three salvos. So, three salvos of, of shots from the Summers, and I'm out. Uh, but, if we can maybe hit him with a torpedo, we can force him out around the corner. But the Summers is no ordinary Summers. It's actually one of the people that's in the division with, or not in the division, but into the in the party with us. Remember, there's a lot of folks trying to get into these games in these count-in streams. And so this just happens to be Big J. Big J is not an idiot. I come over to assist, I flood that with torpedoes, he's already out of there. He's like, okay, I can't sit in my smoke screen, Spartan's coming over, he saw me on my way over, so he knows to get out the way. So he's able to disengage. Now, keep an eye on the two battleships that are on my side. I have come over here to help assist. We have driven the, the destroyer out of the cap. The carrier is coming back over to potentially spot me here. So, I, I drop out of the cap. Not a good idea here. I was perfectly safe, and there was just something in my head that was like, okay, this guy's clearly going to come over and spot me. But he didn't. He just he flew away. So, I'm like, okay, well, now I need to get back in the cap. Okay, because remember, right now the teams are relatively even. The enemy has lost a battleship already, which is not ideal for them. But, for the most part, the teams are relatively even. However, look at what the enemy team is doing. And this is something that I think a lot of people can learn a lesson from. And the only reason that I'm posting these video clips, uh, it isn't because of the ridiculous damage. It's a teaching point. And Aaron and I had already talked to 
I was I told them I was going to post these, and we agreed on the reason behind them being posted. It's not because they're amazing games, but they are very teachable. And this is one of the things that I want to bring up. It's not it's not us being mean or anything like that. It's just something that hey, you see this, try to avoid it in the future. All of the enemy ships, with the exception of the Summers over here, which is Big J, and the Edinburgh are going to go congregate in the middle of the map. Now, this is a domination match, meaning who controls the caps wins the match, right? So if we can get two caps early, that's going to give us a points advantage. We already have a slight point advantage because we killed one of their battleships. I haven't done anything other than try to capture a base so far. Now, watch what my Kansas is about to do. My Kansas knows that there's a destroyer out there. And he knows that it's a bad idea to try to go over there. He also should know that there's a whole lot of enemy battleships in the middle of the map that have a crossfire on them, who he is currently giving a broadside to. There is nothing I could do here. Now, I say there's nothing I could do. I could potentially drop a smoke screen here, but if the Kansas is firing his guns, that's not going to help him at all. So all I can do is potentially try to get in and get this cap and then try to start to make an impact on all of these people that are all clumped up in one spot. So here we do a little bit of a soft beach. Uh, we were able to get those torps away. We expect him to slow down and turn out. And so we're going to try to get out of here. And you may have saw Big J spotted here. This is where concealment comes in handy. Again, he could easily kill me right here. He's got an Edinburgh there to back him up as well. So I don't want to engage here because that, in, that ends in almost my certain removal. But uh, you can see Musashi actually does a really good job here. He, he's not stupid. He got hit. He's turning in. Unfortunately for him, I got one outlier torpedo that's going to be like, Oh, that's a nice bow you got there. Be a shame if something were to happen to it. Dunk. There's a full damage, well, almost. It's 17,000 damage permaflood that's going to get the kill on the Musashi. So our first hit ends up being 20,000 damage and a kill. Uh, but at this point... Summers is so far away, he takes a shot at me, I get away from that. Arkansas dies, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Uh, again, he, he should have seen the amount of people that were in the middle of the map and not put himself in a broadside situation to be ruined by all of their team's firepower. Now, do I chase those guys that are here off the map? No. Do I even bother with those guys? No. The reason being is the Edinburgh just got slapped, so his, his likelihood that he's going to push in against our battleship is slim and none. And Big J, Big J is not going to really push in because he also doesn't have a lot of health. So if he gets spotted, then our battleship has a chance to kill him really easily. This is the most dangerous play I can make here. I am between a rock and a hard place, literally. There is a Cleveland inside radar range off to my right. I am eyeing the Bismarck and potentially Aaron with the next torpedo salvo. You can see he's eight and a half kilometers away and it's Cleveland. If he radars me right now, that's a lot of angry people that could easily remove me real quick. But he doesn't. And that allows me to get to turn the corner. Bismarck is starting to reverse, so we go ahead and we place one salvo behind him. We're going to wait. We don't want to toss all of our torpedoes at one time here. And this actually ends up being the perfect play here towards the end of the match. We have the points lead. We have the enemy bottlenecked into one small area. So now it's just a feeding frenzy. They are surrounded on all sides, and they don't really have anything they can do about it. They can't angle against everybody. This is the ultimate crossfires. Well, I say ultimate crossfires because we do have a battleship still over here taking shots. Now you can see we're going to catch the uh, Bismarck here with a torpedo. Gets a flood. He's flooding, and we also have the second set of torpedoes and Bismarck doesn't see them quite in time he does turn avoids one of them but the one that he does avoid goes straight into Aaron for another 15,000 damage and at this point this game's over like getting rid of one of their battleships there and then Aaron immediately gets removed by our repub this is the importance of crossfires guys and this is the importance of having destroyers and and teams do their jobs Moving up, grabbing those caps, winning those flanks, and then being able to catch everybody in the middle. If Aaron's team had stayed on their sides and actually fought their sides, this match, at least, if nothing else, gets drug out a lot longer and comes down to more of a, um, a brawling sort of scenario. 
Whereas, because of their entire team congregating in one location on the map, we were able to capture the outside bases, which forces the enemy to do something, because we have the points lead. So they're going to have to do something, and because of the fact that we, we uh, grabbed, grabbed those bases, and they were all stuck in one place on the map, we were then able to come in from both sides, and just, th there was nothing that they could do at that point. And again, this isn't anything that I did in particularly amazing. This was just a good team effort. All the way around the board. We have all three caps at this point. The only person left is the carrier. Uh, we didn't lose any destroyers. We lost a couple of battleships, and that's it. And why is that? It's because their whole team left their flanks and went to the center of the map. That's a terrible strategy. And so... Keep this in mind going forward. If you guys are in these sorts of situations, there's a reason I say try to win or at least hold your side. The flanks are very important. There is a reason that countries in real world try to get pincher maneuvers. Because if you can get people where you have firepower on both sides of them, and it, it turns into a turkey shoot. There's nothing you can do. You can only angle against so many people. Like, you have to point your bow towards somebody in order to, to use the angle to, to deflect as much damage as possible. And when you're getting chopped up from the other side because of it, there's nothing you can do. So, while it wasn't a particularly amazing game for us, only 70,000 damage. We got five tour pits. We got third on the team. But four people had 2,000 base XP, and there was only really one person on our team that didn't really do much. And that was the Kansas that got himself crossfired by the entire enemy team. Now, that being said, the Jean Bart is going to kind of do the exact same thing on this match where we hold our flank. And note what Aaron's team does once again. Okay, this is, this is the first match that we were in against Aaron. This is going to be a much better damage game, and this is me in a battleship, and Aaron's actually going to be in the destroyer this time. So I thought that that was a nice little dynamic as well. First, first game... Uh, was me in a battleship, Aaron in a destroyer. Second game that I ended up getting into was me in a destroyer, Aaron in a battleship. So it just, it, it felt like a fun little game to showcase, you know, with me and Aaron kind of inverting each other. Um, it was just, a, it was a fun, fun time. And, uh, the banter that was going on in the chat, I, I didn't want to record it because you never know, there's a lot of people in there. So first of all, it's kind of cluttered. You got usually multiple games of game audio going or chat going. So you don't want to necessarily record that because it just becomes a, a cluttered mess. But it was a lot of fun to just sit there and listen to uh, what was going on or what was being said. But uh, here, we're going to push off to the right side. This is the new map. This is Riposte. We're going to try to hold this side. And Aaron's team, once again, is going to be in one of those situations where their whole team comes and congregates in one location. And by holding our side for as long as we can, we give our team enough time to try to win the flanks. Now... Our team doesn't do a particularly amazing job in this one in terms of creating crossfires. It becomes a bit of a stalemate because of the amount of firepower that is against us. We're going to be running into issues with trying to, to get some good damage. But when you see the amount of firepower that is grouped up against us at the ACAP here, this spot is probably one of the best spots in the map. If you're a solo player and you spawn near here, you can hold this cap, deny the enemy points, and protect yourself from just about anything, with the exception of a good DD player flanking and getting around you. Uh, which we showcased on stream the other day with a, uh, I think it was a Tashkent or a Kaba maybe, that, that pushed around the corner, tried to torp us. We protected ourselves from the torps, but we weren't able to eventually, like, not die. Like, we ended up getting harassed by a battleship too, while we were fighting the, the Kaba and trying to get rid of him. But here, our destroyer gets radared, he's getting countered early. Uh, so he's going to have to disengage. He actually takes surprisingly little damage in this engagement, which is fun because that's a that's a radar off the board. So you know he's only got maybe two more of those max, uh, assuming he's got one, but he could have up to two more. But if he's, he's going to do that, that means that uh, we are going to have a decent time here. But I don't want to overextend. Look at the mini-map. Look at the amount of firepower that if I push around this corner is going to have open season on my ship. I don't care how good you are at the game. If you get that much firepower, concentrate... Oh my god, hello, robot. How are you? 
broadside of aroma with high velocity 15 inch guns no no dice only three overpins unfortunate but look at the enemy ships Okay, so Kuchestov starts shooting at us, Roma takes a shot at us, we're gonna get shot from the guys on the left. And this is just one of those perfect scenarios where you're like, okay, I cannot push around this corner. If I do, I'm dead. I don't care what ship you're in, I don't care how much, how good you are at the game. If you try to turn that corner against that much firepower, you are dead. And not to mention the fact that Aaron's out here sneaking around in a destroyer somewhere. So here you can see, rather than push out into it, also we have an Iowa that's broadside. We go ahead and pop that reload booster, hoping to catch him uh, with a shot here. But I'm expecting to be countered. We do get a Citadel on the Iowa as well. I'm expecting to be focused by the destroyer. Okay, it's Aaron. Aaron, Peek, and I, we have, a, we have a way of finding each other and trying to ruin each other's games. So uh, when we do get into these scenarios and one of us has the ability to be completely invisible, I am expecting him to be coming. And lo and behold, we see torpedoes. <laughs> so reversing away, limiting who can engage us. Right now we're limiting the only people that can even shoot us are this Iowa and this Kuchizov. That's it. And right now we're not even spotted. So that tells me that Aaron is not pushing this side. He sent a couple of torpedoes our direction just to kind of keep us honest and maybe get a cheeky hit, but he's not pushing us, which allows us to sit here. And here you can see I am hard on the throttle trying to stop me from coasting out of the cap here. We're three seconds out. Come on, Spartan, get the cap. Yes, we got the cap. Woo, that was close. But uh, here we're, we're going to take a shot at the Iowa superstructure. Iowa is, I, this guy has just flat out lost his mind at this point. He got, I don't know if he got upset because I citadeled him, but you can't do this, man. You can't solo try to push against multiple battleships that are holed up behind a cap. So here he's still over angled. We're going to go ahead and make him pay for it. We don't shoot waterline here because I don't think that I'm going to citadel him. So I am a little bit higher to get more hits on target. And there it is. We actually do end up citadeling him, which surprised even me. But that gets rid of him. And that means that they've lost a destroyer and a battleship. And our side of the map, if you pay attention, the enemy's starting to try to get to that point where they're like, okay, well, this isn't working here. So what can we do to try to spread some of our influence elsewhere? So slowly, over time, ships are starting to push away from our side. What does this mean? This means it's pretty much time to push. Maybe not right away. We do have a Bolti over here. We have a Kuchuzov over here. We have a couple of battleships in the pocket that could still engage us if we're not careful. But now's the time to start putting the pressure on the enemy and trying to find their weak spot and you can see here i look to try to shoot the uh, flounder can't quite shoot him bolty just maybe a little bit if we can hit superstructure here but there's an iowa behind me and the iowa overmatches that bolty we get a decent hit into the bolty don't do a lot of damage to him but between us and that iowa that bolty just lost a lot of hit points and the next time he gets spotted i think we're going to be pretty happy with him uh, but as you can see his team is pushing towards the mid now now what what have we talked about with having crossfires guys we have one battleship that's sitting in the b cap nose to nose with these guys and their battleships have been uh, chunked pretty hard at this point but now they're giving up their broadsides to us on this right side and while i'm not in a position to shoot at them somebody is and they're going to get some shots over the map and, and absolutely ruin these guys. You can see Iowa takes a shot at him as well. Massachusetts manages to burn him down with secondaries, I'm assuming. And now it's game on. It's over. This game's over. Uh, our team has won this match. We've captured the two bases. The enemy hasn't managed to capture a single base. We are now going to be able to push our flank. Uh, we've got a shot against this uh, Flounder. We actually don't get spotted because nobody's close enough to uh, be inside our smoke firing penalty. So we get a free shot there without being detected. You can see this Balti did in fact lose over half his hit points in the last shot. And now he's about to get smacked by the Iowa again. And I'm looking at the Kuchizov out here because Iowa can easily kill that, that Balti. I'm not likely to. Uh, even at this range, if I shoot at a superstructure, I'm not likely to finish him off. So I just go ahead and start working on the guy that's further out that I'm more likely to, to do good damage against. And then Balti comes out. He's over angled, but it wouldn't matter if he's angled or not. Iowa's going to go straight through that. And then with that, 
this team has folded like a sack of dominoes. But this is a perfect scenario. Both of these games showcase why you can't just sit and we finish the game with a nice little double, uh, death strike, double citadel death strike. But this is a perfect scenario why you just can't take your entire team and ball up in one spot and leave the, the enemy team to capture the bases and have the advantage. Because eventually you're going to have to do something. And when you give up the edges, then it just becomes a turkey shoot and everybody on your team just gets picked apart and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So we end up finishing top of the leaderboard with 2,300, 130,000 damage there. GG's to everybody that got into the matches, but I just wanted to showcase these two just due to the the overall lack of, of awareness that was shown by the enemy teams in this one, where they all just kind of congregated to the center of the map. So make sure, if you guys are in these sorts of situations, that you stick to your sides, you do your best you can to hold the flanks, because the flanks are the most important on the map. Okay? And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.